Hi guys, in this project, we will build a Wikipedia clone with React.js. We will use the Wikipedia API to fetch the data from Wikipedia. We will also use the Microsoft UI library to style this app so that it looks more like Microsoft web apps. So if you are excited to learn this project uh, and build it with me, please subscribe the channel and like this video. So without wasting further time, let's jump to code. Here I've created a new React app and this is my app.js file. So first of all, let's get rid of the boilerplate code like this. Now let's give it a title that says Wikipedia. Okay, so now in this tutorial, what we'll do is we'll allow the user to search a query. We'll fetch Wikipedia pages that match the query. And then when a user clicks a page, uh, we display the contents of the clicked page okay so in this uh, we'll need to use two apis one to search the pages and second uh, to get the contents of the page and we'll need to display an input box to get the user input so first of all let's uh, install the ui library in our project so uh, this is the website uh, for the Fluent UI React version and this is by Microsoft so let's install this in our project like this and the library has been installed so let's go back and set it up let's copy this import and go to our index.js and here we paste the import and then we copy this uh, code here and we'll paste it here and we'll bring our app inside of the fluent provider right so we save our app and we come here right so this is the documentation you can go through this and uh, check how to use this so for example let's create a, uh, let's create a heading for our app so to do that we need to import this and then we'll copy this so here basically we are using the use styles uh, uh, sort of uh, function or hook uh, that allows us to create some styles some js styles css and js styles which we can apply to our components so let's call this heading okay and let's just directly try and apply this so we'll create a styles object from the use styles uh, like this and then we'll apply the styles to our h1 like this uh, sorry uh, this will be heading and the style has been applied right and we can try and increase uh, the font size let's say we'll do title one so it's a bit larger right now let's move on to the next thing we want to display an input box so let's check the documentation for an input component so here are some input components right and uh, there's a lot of documentation here so you can go through this uh, the way you want and i'll just grab the first one so like you probably you haven't uh, used this library uh, ever and similarly i haven't uh, too so uh, yeah we'll just explore and use it uh, right now so 
what we want is we want an input component right and this would come from fluent UI like that now the ID uh, what should be the ID so we need to create an ID for this input using the use ID hook which also comes from the fluent uh, UI like this and then we'll pass in some props so the props could be uh, basically uh, probably these so instead of the props we'll just uh, give them ourselves so placeholder will be search wikipedia right and here is our input box with our placeholder it looks nice uh, now next thing is to make this input box controlled so let's uh, uh, create uh, a state variable called query and we'll use the use state hook the initial state will be empty and this is how you import the use state hook so now that we have created this uh, state variable let's hook this to our input uh, we'll give the value uh, to be query so now uh, on change we'll uh, get the event and then we'll set query to event dot target dot value so now we can type things and we get the value and we can check this by sort of just uh, creating a p tag and uh, putting query here so when we type, as you can see, uh, the query state variable is being set. So now that we can set query, we need a button uh, uh, and on click will call an API. So let's get a button. Uh, here's the button component, right? And we'll get the code. This is the button component and we import it from fluent ui like this and we'll call it search and then probably just on click we'll call the search wiki function right so now we need to define the search wiki function like this we'll use the arrow syntax uh, like this and this function will call an API so let's make it an async function we'll use the async await syntax to make the API call now before calling the API first of all let's define a try catch block for doing exception handling and on catch we'll just log the error as it is now we also need to do something so if the query is not present then we don't want to call the API so we'll just return the function uh, if the query variable is not set or empty now we also need to show some loading indicator so let's create a state variable uh, for the loading indicator we'll call it loading and set loading which initially will be uh, false and as soon as this function is called so about here after the query check has been passed we'll set loading to uh, true and then after this function ends in a finally block which will always run regardless of the result of this function or api call we'll set loading to uh, false like this okay so now after we call the API, we would need some uh, state variable to store the data. So the first data we'll get will be the pages, list of pages. So we'll create a pages state variable, which will be an empty array like this, right? 
So we have a button and we can click that and it would create a call search. And let's uh, write the code for the API now. So for this API, first of all, we'll get the URL. So we'll define the URL uh, like this. This is our uh, API endpoint. Now we need to define some params. So uh, let's create new URL search params. And this will take an object and the keys would be, first of all, we'll define the action, which will be query. The second will be a list and the list should be search. The third param says SR search key. And this will be our query, right? And then the format of the response which should be JSON in a string and the origin uh, which will do just location dot origin and we can do window dot location dot origin right so this means that the URL of our current uh, page is the origin for the API call now these are all the params we need we can write our fetch API call so let's type it out and we'll use await right now uh, we'll make use of uh, string interpolation uh, to call uh, to substitute the URL and params here so uh, first of all we need to get the URL right and after the URL, uh, we'll get the query params uh, like this. Okay. So this gets our, uh, this calls our API. And then we'll get data by awaiting on uh, rest.json. And then we can check for success so the way we check for uh, success is if response dot query dot search of zero has a title uh, key and if that title key matches our query uh, then it should be success or we can just check if the title is present, which means there is a result uh, with the title present. So there is one page at least that exists. So uh, first of all, let's just console log our response so we can check what it is. And then we can also set our data, sorry, set our pages. And we'll set our pages to rest.query.search, which will be an array. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, to data.query.search. And this will be data as well. And this will be data as well. Cool. And let's just try it out and see what happens. So we'll open our console. We'll type for, let's say, Nelson Mandela and search. So here we are getting a course error. So to solve this, uh, let's go back and change our origin to star. Right? And let's try again. And here is our response. So now the API should succeed. So let's cl clear this and try again. And as you can see, the API is working now. So you would need to change your origin to star and then it should work. So as you can see, so the data object will have query, data.query.search, which will be an array. So in our pages object, we already have all the pages. So let's try and list down the pages, just like Google lists down uh, its results. So what we'll do here is uh, we'll do pages and map and we'll get a page 
let's also get the index and then we'll just uh, for now let's just show the page dot title and here are all the page titles listed yeah we can just uh, do a link instead I guess right so let's grab a link and we'll paste it here and we'll copy the page title which will become the link text get rid of this and let's import link it should look like this and now uh, we need to update this href right yeah. instead of making this an href we can uh, we have to do an API call when this is clicked right so let's just make it hash and we'll create an on click and on click will do show page function and this show page function will be called as a callback and will take the page as its argument and let's create the page uh, show page function again an arrow function and will also be a sync and takes a page as it uh, argument and let's just log the page right so we have all the links listed down here okay so what we can do is we can wrap all of these in a div probably uh, what happens if we wrap it in a card so in this card we can just make a header right uh, let's paste it here let's import card card header and body as well as card preview we'll see if we want to use that later and card footer right and we'll copy this link yeah for now what we want is in the card header uh, let's remove this image right and in the header here so yeah this will be the link right and the description uh, could be so in our page the details that we get are title we also get a timestamp and word count let's display the timestamp for now let's get rid of the card preview and in the card footer let's uh, get rid of everything as well yeah so yeah now this looks much better right so now we can uh, also display this date in a nice manner so we'll do date and pass the timestamp to that and then we'll need to display to date string right so now this looks much better and uh, we can try and give this uh, we can try and apply some styles ourselves so we can give it a margin top of let's say 10 
uh, or let's say 10 VH right and we can give it a width of let's say 60 percent we can uh, give it basically a margin of 10 VH auto and get rid of this cool and this looks pretty nice and to each card we can as well uh, give a margin bottom let's say 10 yeah so now this looks like a, a pretty search page so you can type in a query and search for something let's say we search for pikachu and we have results for pikachu now what happens if we click on it so so far nothing oh console.log yeah so if we click on it uh, it just logs to the console right yeah we need to do something about that uh, but before that let's uh, give our card a key which will be index or instead uh, we can give the page id as uh, the index so we can do page dot page id uh, do we not have them? why is the page not defined Oh, sorry. Yeah. So now when we clear this, we search for this. Yeah, there are no key errors. Cool. So we can search our Wikipedia app now. Yeah. Next thing to do is uh, show each of these pages when a link is clicked. Right. So to do that, again, we need to call an API. So first of all, let's create a try catch block and just log the error right and then uh, we'll also set the loading to true here and inside of the finally block we'll set loading to false right so the API will be, uh, let's define a URL. So this is the API, right? Now in this API, you need to substitute our page, right? So the page should come here and we'll do page dot title. And uh, then we, call this API fetch URL and we'll await on this fetch and when we get the data like this and then log it to the console right now we need an a state variable to hold this data so let's just call it page and set page and this will be an empty object right and back down here we'll set a page to data right so now let's try this out we search for pikachu we get some results. Let's click on one. Right. So here we again uh, hit the course. So let's try and construct this API call just like we did uh, previously. Or we can just uh, create a query param like this and set it to star. So the origin is set to star. Let's try again. So we can set the format to JSON.
right so now this returns a response and as you can see we have uh, the response and the key that we are after is the text key okay so let's get that key and display it on our page right so what we'll do is the card uh, this will be displayed uh, if the page uh, data is not present so if page dot text sorry page dot parse dot text so if page dot parse dot text uh, dot length uh, is zero only then this will be shown cool and if that exists so we check for that again here and we check for not equal to in that case uh, we'll show something we can create a div like this and we need to as you can see uh, or for now let's just set the text as it is okay right so as you can see we did click on that and so now it's uh, it comes up like this so we also need a button so that we can go back so let's create a button right here inside of this there so the button should be go back and on click this would set page to Right. So what we needed to do is we needed to set the text since we are checking on that. So we need to set the text when uh, empty string. So now uh, it's working. Uh, now when we click on a page, uh, it shows uh, that uh, page. Now instead of just uh, showing the HTML, we want to show this uh, formatted. So to do that, we'll use the dangerously set HTML. Uh, method right so let's grab this so let's grab this and we'll create a div here And on this div, we'll copy this, get rid of this, and set our text. Cool. So, yeah, this lists the formatted text uh, as it is. And let's also uh, try to fix this somehow. Uh, so on this div, we'll give some styles. We'll set the text align to start. Okay. Right. So this looks nice. Yeah. So this is an entire Wikipedia page as it is listed uh, here. This is our page. We can uh, click on go back and it would go back right and we can go to other pages as well now as you can see that there is some lag and that is because the api is being uh, called so let's display a spinner a loading spinner so here is the spinner and the way we display it is 
cool so we need to display a spinner whenever loading is true so we'll do that just below here inside of this and we'll check if loading is true and when uh, it is uh, we show the spinner and we'll import the spinner like this and when loading is false we'll just display the rest of things cool so the spinner should have a prop an attribute for loading like this and let's try it out yeah it works well so let's search for something uh, let's say Tom Cruise yeah so the loading indicator is working well and on the search button we can make it disabled while loading is true okay so Tom Cruise search and then click right uh, for the search button we can uh, give it an appearance of primary so now it looks a bit better so for this button let's set the size to small and on this let's also add a margin top 10 vh yeah so this looks better and this is our wikipedia app let's grab some wikipedia image how about this one and we'll create an image tag and it's here uh, but does this component library also have an image component uh, it does this is the image component let's import the image from fluent ui and these are how all our imports from fluent ui would look look like and we'll just copy the source paste it here yeah i guess the previous one is fine uh, let's make it a bit smaller so we'll just do 600 yeah that's nice and uh, let's get rid of uh, the title that we gave right and let's put this in a dip cool so uh, we can try and make the input box large as well we can set the size prop to be large right and we can set the display to be block as well what if we yeah and maybe this has a margin top cool and can we set width on this uh and maybe a margin top as well and on our button we can set a width as well right so this is our wikipedia app you can type a query and search for anything uh, let's say we can search for world war
and we have World War listings if we click on World War 2 and we have the page on World War 2 So this is our Wikipedia clone. If you like this video and you learned something, please uh, hit like and subscribe to the channel. It motivates me to create more uh, tutorials and do comment what you would like to learn next or if you have any doubts. Uh, this is it.